Hola, hoy os voy a traer una charla que he dado eh, aquí en Australia, en la universidad, y tiene que ver con lo que he estado haciendo aquí estos últimos dos años y aprendiendo un poco más, así que, bueno, os la he subtitulado y os la dejo por aquí. La he hecho con un programa eh, Amsomnia de la Universidad para, bueno, pues para que científicos comuniquen un poco su trabajo y ha sido un placer trabajar con ellos, he quedado creo que muy chula, así que, bueno, espero que la disfrutéis. As a Spaniard, people often ask me about my favorite soccer team or my favorite match. My answer often surprises them. As a fan, it may be some of the matches Spain played when they won the World Cup, but as an economist, it is the match of Barbados vs. Granada in the 1994 Caribbean Cup. The rules of this tournament were such that there were no ties. Every tie had to be resolved with the classic golden goal rule. Whoever scores first in the extra time wins the game. However, this tournament had an unusual variant of the rule, in which the golden goal is worth two goals. At some point in the tournament, Barbados and Granada were competing to qualify for the next round. If Barbados beat Granada with a difference of two goals, Barbados will qualify. If not, Granada will qualify. The match was tense. Barbados was winning 2-1 against Granada in the final minutes. And then something strange happened. Players from Barbados scored in their own goal. They realized that the tie will give them all the extra time to try and score a goal that will count for two and will make them qualify for the next round. And from there, absolute madness. Barbados wanted to keep the tie until the end of the match so they could play the extra minutes. So they basically split their team in two and start to defend both goalposts. At the same time, Granada will qualify if they make the score uneven. So they try to score a goal anywhere. You can imagine it was not a soccer match anymore. It was a circus. Players from Barbados doing their best to defend everything, while players from Granada, confused, just struggled to coordinate on which side of the field to attack each time. At the end, Barbados successfully defended both goal posts, scored the golden goal, and qualified for the next round. But everybody felt cheated. This is an example of terrible market design. Market design is just like reverse game theory. In game theory, we study strategic interactions, like a soccer match. This consists of uh, some agents, like the soccer teams, that can achieve some outcome, like winning the tournament or not, depending on what strategies they and other agents play, like how to play its soccer match, under certain uh, game rules, like the rules of the tournament. We study how agents should play and how they actually play. So, market design is just like the reverse exercise. We first set an objective that we want to achieve, and then, using what we know about agents' choices and preferences, we design a mechanism, the rules of the game, to make that objective happen. For example, in a soccer tournament, your objective may be that uh, the best team that plays soccer wins, and that the fans enjoy the best soccer they can see. Which rules should we place? Spoiler, not the Caribbean Cup rules. The rules of this tournament created incentives for the soccer teams that were disentangled from the objectives or the soccer organization. This problem naturally arises often in our lives, sometimes with uh, really important issues. Some of the challenges humanity is facing right now and that we will find our future have that nature. 
like climate change. For a long time, companies did not have to care about how much they pollute. That variable was not in their profit function, after all. In that case, the problem was not bad rules, but the lack of rules. There were no market on pollution. So, what can we do about this? Well, it is pretty easy. Just tell them to stop polluting, problem solve, right? Like we could tell the Barbados team just to play normal soccer. Yeah, it seems clear that that does not work. We could also enforce it, but nobody likes that really much. We prefer to make our own choices, or at least feel like we do. Also, we can do something better than that. We can use their decisions to gather information and even make them work for us. For example, imagine the following problem. Two brothers are fighting over how to split a pizza. The toppings are just not uniformly distributed, so it's not straightforward to do an equal split. The kids keep fighting and arguing, and they cannot agree in a split in which they both agree, because they keep trying to get the bigger or better parts. We could solve this problem in our forcing way and just cut the pizza ourselves. But in order to do that, we'll have to think really hard about where exactly is the fairest point, and we'll have to cut it ourselves, and they may even argue that it is not fair. I propose a better solution for this problem, a market design solution. Imagine the following rules. First, one of the brothers splits the pizza in two halves, however he wants. Then, the other brother will choose for himself the piece that he prefers, and will give the other half to his brother. If you think about it, with these rules, the second brother who picks the half will choose the better half. In consequence, it is in the best interest of the first brother who cuts the pizza to make the worst piece as good as the other, cutting the pizza exactly in the first way. Why is this system better? Well, first, it gives them freedom, because it does not enforce any cutting or choice to the brother. Second, it is effective, because it guarantees an equal split that was the objective. And it is also efficient, because it makes them do all the work to figure things out themselves, given their preferences. The system is actually used in real life to distribute inheritances, for example. Going back to the fight against carbon emissions, market design is widely applied across the planet in carbon markets. Normally, the basics were like this. Government set a total cap of emissions for the whole region. Companies can make emissions, but they need the permits for that amount of emissions. Permits are given for freer auction, and companies have the freedom to trade them as they will. Why is this market design solution good? This mechanism gives companies freedom, because they can pollute more or less, even if it is at a cost. It is also effective, because at the end, a cap is set. But most importantly, it is efficient. Companies try to maximize their own profit. And this is a way to introduce the pollution into this profit function. So there's a part, the permits, in which the, in which the less they pollute, the more profit they get. Until which point they will reduce their emissions? They will, until reducing emissions will cost as much as just buying more permits. This means that companies for which it's easier to obey will be the ones doing it more, which is exactly what we want. And we will achieve it without going to do an investigation on the companies and figure things out ourselves. When I came to Australia, I didn't know that much about market design. Here, I joined the Agora Center for Market Design, one of the few centers in the world dedicated to market design, and I got hooked by this wonderful direct application of economics. It opens a new dimension to it, one in which you can change institutions for the better. It really changes the way you think. Whether it is because the actual rules are bad, like in the soccer match, 
or because there are no rules, like in the environmental case, market designs create appropriate rules for individuals such that when they make decisions, their outcomes are in line with what we want as a society for a future. For example, setting the rules that uh, match students with schools, or the rules that translate people votes into social outcomes, or the rules for resource management in fisheries that prevent overexploitation and protect fishers at the same time. In the Agro Center for Market Design, we apply our knowledge to work in some of these cases. And if such an innocent rule as the golden goal counting as two goals can turn a soccer match into madness, imagine how hard it could be sometimes to come up with and calibrate for some of these cases in more complex settings. Global issues that arise from inappropriate individual incentives are increasingly present in our more and more globalized societies. And we will need market design to make sure we do not score in our own goal.